When I think of this timber wave, what I do think is it demonstrates so perfectly to see the flexibility, the durability, and the sustainability of wood. In this case, I'm proud to say American red oak. After a year and a half of planning to finally be standing here on the Cromwell Road in London with the structure behind us has given us a real sense of achievement. This is the third collaboration that we've done with the London Design Festival and when Ben Evans approached us nearly two years ago and said he'd like to work with us again, which architect would we like to work with? For me there was, there was no hesitation and Amanda Levitt's name came right out of the hat. The Timber Wave is really all about celebrating the London Design Festival's residency at the v &A. This is the third project that we've done with Ray Heck and we enjoy working with each other. The relationship with the is very important. It's um, our central venue, it's, it, it's our hub of all our activities. It's where we put our best projects. Something different is happening at the v &A, so it's kind of bringing the v &A out onto the street and using this real kind of exploration of timber as a material as a, as a way of expressing that. The entrance on Cromwell World is huge and how do we, with small pieces, how do we respond to that scale, how do we respond to the grandeur and create a self-supporting piece that is not attached to the building. That was a huge structural and logistical challenge. Timber is really an incredibly flexible material that we were able to use 600 different pieces to create a whole. I don't think there's another material that we could have feasibly used to do this. What we try to do with these projects is to bring together a unique blend of talents and skills. This project has exemplified that. Uh, we've got Arabs engineering skills and our specialist uh, wood engineers. We've got Cowley who fabricated and uh, installed the piece for us. And we've got ALA, the architects, who challenged us all with their design. And I think the combination of all of those skills makes it a very, very special project. This project is exactly the sort of thing that we like getting our teeth into. We had a 22-tonne container turn up in sort of the middle of June, which was full to the brim of, of red oak which we then had to sort out in assorted lengths and thicknesses and, and widths. I think the technical complexity is obviously there, but the number of pieces to be drawn in detail is particularly challenging. And in order to make the, the components that we were using, we had to then process those into sort of seven millimetre laminates um, and 20 millimetre laminates to form the, the braces and the cords of the structure. So very complicated as far as that went. There are 500 different pieces in this. I think each one is more or less unique. And in a sense, I think, you know, it's the fact that wood is so easy to machine, which meant it was, was the ideal material to do this in. As engineers, what we like to do is keep everything straight and when things come together, make them all line up so they join at a, at a point. On, on this piece, nothing is straight and nothing really joins up. So there are lots of bending and twisting forces in the system that, that we had to kind of calculate. And because the geometry of every connection is different to its neighbour, you know, it becomes quite a challenge. Red Oak had never been um, properly tested before. And then what that showed was this material was actually about twice the strength of sort of the ordinary softwoods that we normally use for, for structures. So that's how we've achieved these tremendously fine sort of filigree members that, that I think is, is such an important part of this, is this very, very lightweight structure. That was by using the Red Oak. There's, there's the really um, ordinary timbers just couldn't have done it. The whole process was all about maintaining and being true to what the, the design was and, and that's basically what we, we achieved. We obviously had challenges and I think the only reason why we overcame the challenges was because there was collaboration you know, throughout the entire process from design to um, engineering to the manufacture and the installation on site as well. When I first saw the timber wave, I, I was blown away. I saw the artist's renderings of it, and it was absolutely incredible in person. I've never seen anything made like this out of my material, and I'm ninth generation in the lumber business. 
This type of installation allows us, the American Hardwood Export Council, to not only showcase the beauty of the wood in such a public place and the performance of the wood in a structural as well as an aesthetically beautiful situation, it gives us an opportunity to talk to people and to start the dialogue about the use of wood in general. Because I think too often people have the idea that using wood is somehow bad for the environment. That somehow if we have to cut down a tree, that's bad. When the science actually tells us that using wood is one of the most environmentally friendly decisions we can make. Using hardwood is not plundering our natural resources. It is simply harvesting them. Our forests are not under threat from this activity. In fact, the volume of hardwood standing in the United States forest has more than doubled in the last 50 years. For that reason, developments such as the EU timber regulations and a growing demand for green buildings and green products should offer us great opportunities. We're part of a much wider movement that, that is promoting wood as an absolutely pivotal key first choice material in all aspects of design and sometimes you've got to pick the most high profile platforms to get those messages across so we're very open about the fact that we use the opportunity of the London Design Festival to do that. This is something brand new and, and you don't often see that in the timber trade. Most of our business is made up of small and medium sized uh, lumber producers, family owned businesses that don't have the resources uh, to do marketing like this. The timber wave is important to me because it exposes our products and our materials to uh, not just people in the United States but all over the world and without the help of AHEC this wouldn't be possible.